last thing is the most important, which is, if not now, when? Okay, does that resonate for people? If not now, when? So wherever you are in your process, be willing to just say, okay, now is now is when. That's what I say, now is when. I'm right here, I'm in this class, I'm gonna leave, and I'm gonna have things to be much more comfortable for me. I'm gonna refine my process, I'm not gonna argue with myself anymore about how I write, I'm just gonna get it written. Fair enough? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the four questions that we talked about last night. Then I'm going to show you how to use my system. The most important thing about my writing method that's different is that we start character first. And does anybody remember what I said about the inner conflict last night? Anybody who was here last night? Yes, sir. Hi. Yes. Hi. Doesn't the uh, inner conflict um, dictate the uh, external conflict as well as the societal conflict? It basically drives all the actions of the character. So if you're in touch with the internal conflict, <coughs> It pretty much can drive everything else. Exactly, exactly. And when you came in, what did you, don't give the mic, but tell them your great opening line. He walked in and he said what? I said I want to come to the class about internal conflict. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is the internal conflict. It was really good, like, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In my place, right? Yes, and it took me a minute because I thought, you know, like he was busting my chops and then I realized that he was in my class last night. Yeah. So, so that was excellent, that's exactly right. right. So what we do and the way I think of it is that if we can find the character's inner conflict, then we can set up a whole new way of writing a screenplay because what we do is we take the inner conflict and we use that, you've heard that word, the engine, uh, one of those words. Well, I like the idea that a screenplay is like building a house. Make sense? And that the first draft and three-act structure help you build the foundation. And I think that all writing is rewriting, okay? How many people agree with me? Okay, so you see why a first draft is so important, you have to get it written. Okay, rewriting something else. Today we're gonna to talk about getting that next first draft for your next screenplay written more easily. And the idea here is, you know how you get in your process and you get really tired, and you know how people give you notes and when you touch one thing, everything changes and it's really creepy and you just get tired and you can't write anymore? It's not necessary, but it requires building the house a different way. Does that make sense? We need a different kind of foundation. And the foundation that I prefer to use is one that's very organic and by basing it on character, it, you don't, you're not constructing a house of cards, you're kind of allowing the thing to go up organically. So when you have to rewrite it, you can go in and change things, and the work is more like laparoscopic surgery than it is like surgery. Does that make sense? And I don't let my students use words like chop, cut, you know, we use words like release. <laughs> <laughs> and again, it's not a new age thing, it's, you know, we're ha I mean, are words not important? Hello. <laughs> I mean, do we not live by the words? Yes. Therefore, every word we use has much more resonance even than other people. So if you look at your work as something you cut, chop, destroy, edit, then guess what the process is gonna feel like, right? Make sense? So the first thing to do is change your words. So here, the idea that you build a different kind of house that allows you to have a different interaction with your material is to me the only way to write a screenplay that's good enough that uses all these new techniques. And you do this by working character first. This is what I've observed. I've taught thousands of writers to do screenplays. Character first is the way to go. But that's a vague intellectual term. And I really have been tortured by those. I try to be concrete. So last night and today we're gonna talk about the three levels of conflict. And the three levels of conflict are very simple. Um, the internal level of conflict is what is preventing my character from having what they want now. Okay, the good news is it's all written down in the book, but well, yes, write it down, it's good. Okay, so the idea is, if we're looking at the Godfather, the inner conflict is that he wants to know if he's gonna be himself or be for his family, right? That's what's, that's what's torturing him. The external level of conflict is the plot. And in the plot, Michael has to decide if he is going to save his father or let him die. And what that means is that the inner internal conflict comes totally into the plot. Does that make sense? And that this now drives the story. Do you understand how it moves up kind of? I think of it sort of as moving up and it drives the whole story. So before we, and let me talk about societal conflict. The societal conflict is the frame of your movie, which is crime or not. Make sense? Now, if you don't have one of these levels in your new screenplay or the one you're refining, that's the first place to make a fix. You may be missing a subplot or something. Does that make sense to people? It does itself, okay? So the way to get here, and again, I'm very involved with not having to 
struggle with intellectual concepts because I say I personally have been tortured by them all my life. So the way that we do this is this. Okay, I have a new student, and oh, it's actually an old student, it's his third script, oh my God. And this morning, we had a breakthrough, and I said to him, what does your character want? What's the one thing that, that defines him? You know, For me, maybe it's yoga. For someone else, it's living in Hawaii. Do it for yourselves right now. What, defi what couldn't you live without? And not another person, because that's a whole other conversation. But in terms of you and you, what's that thing that you would move your soul for, sell yourself for, make time for, sacrifice other things for. Everybody got that in mind? It comes right up. Isn't that interesting? Anybody not know? If so, that's another class. <laughs> but, but show of hands, everybody got that right. You see, it was not hard. This is what I want to tell you. This work is, there's a long way and there's an easy way. This is the easy way you start with yourself. So you have what you would do and what you couldn't live without. Now do it for your character right now. Everybody got that? Okay. Michael Corleone, what can't he live without? His father's love, no? Does that not drive that movie? Okay, it comes right up, you don't have to think about it. And that, by the way, is one of the hallmarks of what I do. You should be able to get a picture in your mind right away. Now, right away is a little slower than words. You get that, right? Because pictures take a little bit more time, like when you upload them on a computer. Exactly the same process here. So, you know, thinking, whoosh, pictures, mwah, okay? You want to wait for that picture before you ever write a word. If you do this for the rest of your lives as writers, your writing will become so good you won't believe it. If you wait for the picture and you don't freak out and you don't panic, you stay calm, and you ask for the image and you put the words under it like a cartoon, very good way to work. Yeah? Does it just make sense to people? Don't we all really do that and then we think it's not okay because it's kind of like cheating? Start cheating, okay? Writing is hard enough without making it harder on yourself, yes? So don't we all have a lot of inner conflict about how hard or easy this process is? Do you understand what's preventing us is how we feel about what we're doing, not necessarily the work we're doing? Okay, does that make sense? So our inner conflict is driving our lives. And if anybody didn't think that writing was the one thing they couldn't live without, then you have to really think about what you're doing here, right? Because that's really what you live for. Come on, you know, it's not yoga, it's not, you know, shopping, though that's important. It's really, <laughs> right, it's not golf or, you know, sports or whatever, it really is. Don't, isn't, isn't, aren't your lives based around writing? Come on. Okay. So wouldn't it be great if you could not have any inner conflict about that and just focus all your energy on getting that plot to work, like the plot in which you write the movie and you get the Oscar or you get the money? Hello. There's a relational process, right? You're the writer. You have nothing else to work with but your own experience. And the sooner you own that, and the sooner you understand that the richness of your life is what will inform your screenplay, the better you will write sooner.